Coming up on Makosi Today. I was attacked in my driveway, uh, beaten, robbed, and they broke into my house, dragged me into the home. They told me immediately that they were going to rape me. I pleaded with them, um, but nothing was going to deter them from doing what they came there to do. Laurie Owens is an award-winning and well-respected South African designer. Her work is themed romantic organic as she draws inspiration from the environment and her surroundings. Her work has taken her around the world as she specializes in boutique hotels, lodges and private residences and has been featured in Elle magazine as well as House and Garden. On the 14th of June 2013, the unimaginable happened. Lori was brutally attacked in her driveway. She was beaten, robbed and gang raped by three men in her own home. This is a daily occurrence in South Africa where approximately 3,600 women are raped a day and on average only one in nine women report the rape. Lori has not let this tragedy bring her down. She has begun developing a personal security device to stop rape, child molestation and violent crime. It's called WARIA, which stands for Women Against Rape and Everyone Against Rape. Makosi talks to Lori about her attack, her feelings, how she has overcome, as well as the bracelet, WARIA. Welcome to Makosi Today. Thank you and thank you for having me. 3,600 women are raped every day in South Africa and unfortunately you were one of them. What happened? You know, it's not just about women that are, are raped, men are being raped, children are being raped and um, I was gang raped in my home and I just like you said earlier on you know there's a lot of people who can't stand up and fight for some reason I have been able to put a voice to what's going on here because we have to do something about it and I feel it's my duty and I will spend the rest of my life doing something about gender violence and and rape in this country um, what actually happened to me was I arrived home early one evening Friday evening half past eight I was attacked in my driveway uh, beaten robbed and they broke into my house uh, dragged me into the home and gang raped me um, I was very very lucky because they after they'd raped me they tied me up again and um, started ransacking the house and I managed to uh, I pulled they put a tile over my head I pulled the tile off my head and managed to get off the bed and hit the panic button which was on my wall security panic button and as I hit the panic button one of them walked back into the room he saw me hit the panic button and screamed to all the others and um, they sort of threw me under the mattress of the bed and ran um, you know so I I don't know what would have happened up it could have gone on all night oh you know it's just but anyway I um, have decided to take what happened to me the the trauma and the traumatic situation and turn it into something that will help other people and other women and children and you know nobody deserves to be raped no matter what is going on in wartime I mean rape is not something new but um, it's just the most awful violation that could ever happen to you and uh, the fact that uh, South Africa is the rape capital of the world um, we have to do something about it and babies are getting raped I mean it's it's more than insane um, and so what I have done is I spent um, a good few months thinking about what I could do to have changed what happened to me because I knew nobody was coming home that night and I have come up with a personal security device which will be worn on your arm it is connected to your security system mm -hmm. Um, so it's like a panic button on your arm. It is also connected via GPRS so that if it gets broken or cut off, because with me they had a knife this long, they just cut all my clothes off. They took the earrings out of my ears while they were raping me. They take everything from you. Um, so they will break How many it. Were they? 
Uh, there were three raped me, and I think there was four, but I'm not 100% sure about the fourth one. Um, one of the guys has been arrested, um, and I won't rest until justice is done. Um, you know, there's a saying that the heavens are not aligned, and heaven is not happy when crimes go unpunished. So, <clears throat> and I think that is that is true for a whole nation. Actually, I think if we live in a, a country where crimes go unpunished, it is part of actual rape culture because it's it leads on to a whole different pattern of human behaviour where people just think they can do what they want, get away with what they want, and we have to start punishing people who are committing violent crimes and doing our best to get them imprisoned. Coming up after the break. But what was going through your head when they were attacking you, when they were violating you? What was going through your head? And your family members, how have they sort of dealt with this? Yeah, that's been tough. Like, what, but what was going through your head when they were attacking you, when they were violating you? What was going through your head? Um, do you know, I remained very calm. I spoke to them the whole way through the whole process. They told me immediately that they were going to rape me. Straight away, they said, we are going to rape you. I pleaded with them. Um, I, I can't even remember all the things that I said, but, uh, you know, I think it's the things that you normally would say, uh, I'm a mother, um, you know, just anything that you can think that would detract them from create, you going through with this violent crime, mm -hmm. um, but nothing was going to deter them from doing what they came there to do. And, um, you know, like I said, I think I was one of the lucky ones, um, but and unfortunately in, this, in, in South Africa, um, people who have been raped say, I was lucky I wasn't murdered as well. That's exactly, like that's what I'm. That's, that's so the, wrong. Exactly. That's. But even the vibe I'm getting from you that I was lucky that it didn't happen all night. I mean, I, I personally don't know anybody who's ever been raped, and just the the violation to your body mm. makes me so emotional. But we, we, when we get to a stage where people say, oh, I'm lucky I was not killed, then it is actually a pandemic. Yeah, it's, it's so bad, it's so bad. I mean, generally, uh, I think people who are living in townships and rural areas and what have you, I mean, this goes on all the time. I mean, I and know- That's why I'm here to talk to you, Laurie, because I, the first time I heard about you, I was watching Sky News, you came on, I thought, no, I, I knew you do design, yeah. and, you know, but you came on and I was thinking, okay, this is absolutely amazing. The world knows we have a problem, but the people that are actually being affected by this problem don't have Sky. And that's where Makosi Today comes in because it goes into the yes. homes of those that don't, don't ha they can't afford to subscribe, yeah. but they've got a television. Well, this is what's so fantastic about this, this personal security uh, device that I've developed, because um, it's all very well to develop a personal security d device, and it's a, f a fantastic thing that we've got, because it's gonna stop people from being raped, people from being murdered, child molestation, old people with, Alz uh, people with Alzheimer's, um, old people if they fall over, um, child trafficking it child really trafficking those 200 nigerian girls that have just gone missing if they had the bracelet if one of those girls had the bracelet she could have saved 200 girls lives True. just one press of that bracelet and 10 people that you nominate on your mobile phone get a message to say you're in trouble they can then they then get the coordinates to where you are they can then go onto a website and follow you, track where you are. Wow. If one of those girls had that bracelet, just one, just one would save 200 lives, perhaps. I mean, hopefully those girls are somewhere safe.
But the, 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 this thing is so dynamic, it's so powerful. Extremely. And, um, you know, it's all very well saying, okay, well, great, you know, uh, we don't all have security systems in our homes. The girls in townships don't have security systems. But they can have a bracelet. They can have a bracelet and they have got 10 people that they know who have cell phones. True. Okay. Not only that, they may not be able to get to a website or an internet cafe or anything quickly, but they can do it as quick as they possibly can. And there will be somebody to help. That's true. So it will, it's going to help those kind of girls. And Warrior, Women Against Rape and Everyone Against Rape, which is the NGO that we've started, is to provide this personal security device to rape survivors, to underprivileged girls, to school children, to people who can't, will never be able to afford this. True. So this is what the NGO is all about. We want to give it for free and we need corporations on board we need people on board because this is a fantastic device if the corporations take it they can um, they can brand it it can be, become part of their branding everyone they buy we give one for free that's true so you know it's 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 something that is going to go right across the board and exactly like you said all very well being on sky news but we need to get to the people who really really need exactly. us where do you get all this fire you have been violated and now you you sit here and you are fighting for these yeah. voiceless people where do you get the fire um i don't know i think it's obviously part of my personality and um you know i'm a christian i pray a lot about about this and this is the direction i've helps. been absolutely and this is the direction I've been I've been uh, guided in. and um, you know because I have been gang raped uh, I can't I know what it, it's so devastating it's so traumatic it's it, it must be the worst thing that could possibly ever happen to anybody and I can't imagine a little girl going through that a little boy a baby and a lot of adults who just wouldn't, couldn't possibly cope afterwards. So I think that that's what drives me. Wow. And your family members, how have they sort of dealt with this? Yeah, that's been tough. Um, my daughter, who's been amazing, she's, she's 25. She um, obviously was absolutely devastated but she's a big part of the fight um, she works for the for the NGO and uh, she's also dedicating her life to to helping and um, yeah it's been tough you know I had to fly to the UK to tell my mother she's 83 and uh, that was very harsh yeah. and you know I fought with that do I tell her don't I tell her but you know how can I do what I'm doing now without having told my mother yeah, told and so you know and I needed my mum to know. I needed comfort from my mother. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. only a mother can give you. Yeah. So it was all good at the end of the day. But it's been very difficult for everybody. How has that affected your... If you don't mind me asking, do you have a boyfriend? I don't. Is it because... No, no. Okay. And no, I didn't have a boyfriend at the time either. Uh, how will it affect my life in the future? Like how, uh, how does it affect you... And relationships do you generally. know I don't know because I haven't I haven't even been in a situation where I've been anywhere close to anything like that a romantic relationship but the one thing I do know 100% is that rape and and love and making love there's nothing similar or you know they're so different. Rape is a violent crime. It is a violation of your body and it has nothing to do with intimate relationships. I'm trying not to get emotional <laughs> because I don't want to set you off. Coming up after the break. Did you ever ask God why? Why me? Or how has the experience changed you as a person? Can I just have a look at what the bracelet looks yes. like? So just to lighten is, it up a bit? Exciting. How has the experience changed you as a person? Um, 
has it changed you? Yes, dramatically, dramatically. Um, I lived with my head in the clouds uh, or my head in the sand, I'm not sure. Um, as far as the crime in this country, I didn't read any of those billboards on the side of the road, no. If I saw six month old baby raped, I just turned away. I, uh, if I heard a gang rape of a 14 year old girl in deep slurts or one of the townships, didn't want to know about it. Yeah. Um, so it's changed me a lot in that way and it's obviously made me realize that the problem in this country is real. Is real. And do you know, I just feel that if you can, if you, if you can't do something to change things and you're just not capable of it, then that's fine. But if you can and you don't do anything, I can't yes, live with yes, myself. Right. I can't live with myself for that. Um, so I want to make a difference. It's really important for me. It's also very much a part of my healing, you know? Very important for my healing. Did you ever ask God why? Why me? No, I didn't. I didn't ask God why me because I feel why me is because of what I'm doing now. Does that make sense? I feel that um, why I am able to stand up and speak about this and do and and try my best to to get other people on board to help me mm -hmm. make a change. A part of our NGO is. Um, one of the objectives is to uh, educate against rape culture. Now, that sounds quite an easy thing to do, but it actually is so involved and so deep and you don't even understand. And, and, and we are all a part of rape culture, swearing, just, you know, this is so many things that we do in our life are part of rape culture. And, um, well, first of all, it's lawless here. Completely lawless. I mean, crimes go unpunished all the time. And uh, I'm a great believer in what the mayor did in New York, where they started with you getting prosecuted for small crimes. You drop a piece of paper on the floor. This starts making people be conscious of what they're doing and you conscious of their effects on society. And, you know, if dropping a piece of paper on the floor people start realizing that's not the right thing to do. It makes it harder for them to touch your body without you allowing it or rape you or steal from you or beat you. Okay. Do you know, I that's think true. it's a whole education it's a thing. It's a whole cultural thing and it's really deep. And you know, we need to learn so much more about it before we can even educate about it. But you know, uh, I, I don't know how true it is, but they say a huge percentage of rapists that have been um, institutionalized were raped as children. So it's the abuse becoming the abuser. Yes, yes. And what kind of children are we bringing up today? What kind of children are we bringing up today when men are out there raping and pillaging and taking f what they want for themselves? Can I just have a look at what the bracelet looks yes. like? Yes, so this is, this is very exciting. So this bracelet has a transmitter and a receiver. Mm -hmm. So it acts like a panic, panic, um, a panic button. And um, it, is, um, it is connected to your security system. So when you're at home, it acts as a panic button. It's waterproof, so you can swim, go in the shower, in the garden with it. Okay. When you leave home, a, a hijacking is a huge problem in this country. Okay. It's GPRS sends a, sends a signal to 10 people on their cell phones mm -hmm. that you're in trouble. So this is not just for South Africa, it goes across the border. This is right? the whole world. This, that's why this is gonna take the world by storm. Of once it gets undone, or once it gets cut off, the signal goes. Okay. And on top of it, um, this bracelet will be a deterrent. So but when see, the potential, the yes, they won't they know. <gasps> Laurie, I'm so honored to talk to you and I'm so inspired by your strength, your inner strength to stand up and be that voice to the eight and nine that don't report. Because there's some people that are gonna see you, they're gonna think if it can happen to her, and if she can go and report. Because I think a lot of 
Africans don't report rape because they feel ashamed of what has happened to them and they feel it happened to me because of something that I have done. So a lot of people I feel are going to watch this and they're going to be so inspired and the grassroots, it's the grassroots we're after. I'm not after people that can get onto Sky. I'm after those people that cannot, number one, and those people that see billboards and they look away. Thank that you so me. much. That was me. I'd also just like to send a message to anyone who's been violated, um, raped, that um, it's never too late to report it. And on top of it, there is nothing that you could possibly have ever done to have warrant being raped. Nothing you did, nothing you wore, no matter if you were drunk, nobody has the right to violate your body under any circumstances whatsoever. I'm so grateful and honored to have been invited here by Lori. She is so brave and you can be brave too. If this has happened to you, if it's happened to somebody you know, if it's happening to somebody you know, speak out. It's not too late. And as Lori said, there is nothing you can do or wear to deserve being raped. Nobody has the right to your body. Nobody has the right to violate you in such a in such a way. Next on Makosi Today. Do all men cheat? I think all men think about it. I think all men get the opportunity. What makes you think you understand women? What makes you think you understand us? Understanding the way women think is largely starts from understanding how you think as a man.